In this instruction video, we will discuss case study research. A case study may be defined as an intensive and detailed investigation of an individual unit, which could, for instance, be a person, but also a group, an institution, an organization, a country, or a teaching method. A case study could, for example, involve an intensive investigation of the parenting style of a mother where data is collected by documentation, observation, and interviews in a period of four weeks. Setting up a case study requires three main ingredients. The first is the ability to deal with a diversity of evidence. The second is the ability to articulate research questions and the theoretical propositions. And the third is the production of a research design. Let's discuss the first ingredient. If you are to do a case study, you should be able to handle a variety of evidence derived from diverse data collection techniques. There can be many sources of evidence, documentation, archival records, interviews, direct observation, physical artifacts, I can go on. Due to their training, some people might only feel comfortable to handle data collected from interviews, but are unable to deal with data collected from direct observation. Doing a case study, you must recognize a broad range of types of evidence and be able to use each type to the best current state of art. Being able to handle multiple sources of evidence also involves using all different types of evidence in a converging manner. They should all converge on the identification of the actual variable of interest. In other words, all types of evidence should point to the same facts. For example, if your variable of interest is friendship patterns, then data collected from interviews should confirm data collected from direct observation and documentation. They must all converge on the identification of friendship patterns. In contrast, multiple types of evidence can also be separated into sub-studies. This is referred to as non-convergence of multiple sources of evidence, and it has been argued that such types of studies do not correspond to the basic definition of a case study. The second ingredient is the ability to articulate research questions and theoretical prepositions. In general, the more your question seeks to explain how and why certain events occur, the more a case study method will be relevant to use. And in contrast, the more a research question involves the enumeration of events, such as how many, other methods will be more relevant to use. Just as essential is the theory development of a case study. The simplest element of a theory is a preposition. An example of a preposition is The case study will show why friendship only lasts when, when persons share the same interests. Such a statement presents the nutshell of a theory. Developing a theoretical preposition will provide guidance as you determine what data to collect and which analysis to perform. A theoretical proposition can also present the nutshell of a rival theory. Propositions of a rival theory are alternative explanations. In other words, a rival theory is an attempt to explain the same outcome, but with a different substantive theory. The third essential ingredient of a case study is determining which case study design is most appropriate with respect to your research questions and theoretical propositions. We will distinguish among explanatory, descriptive and exploratory case studies. Explanatory case studies aim to explain phenomena or causal relationships. Descriptive case studies describe interventions or processes and Exploratory case studies explore phenomena characterized by a lack of preliminary research. 
To summarize, a case study can be defined as an intensive and detailed investigation of an individual unit and requires three ingredients. The first is to deal with the diversity of evidence. The second is to articulate research questions and the theoretical propositions. And the third is the production of a research design.